principles of information security. That means how we define security, or what are the principles of it, right? So the basic principles are given by CIA. So what is the CIA? Their confidentiality, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Right? So you may say that uh, who said, uh, who decided that uh, these three are the main pillar of information security, or um, and, um, these three are the principle of information security. So this principle is decided by basically N I S T. Okay. So, what is N I S T? I think uh, many of you already know. This is National Institute of uh, Standards. And uh, just a minute. National Institute of Standards and Technology. So. <coughs> They decided it, and you know that you know worldwide people mainly when it comes to some standards in technology and mainly in computer uh, technology, we first check that whether there is some guideline, some standard given by NIST or not. If it is there, uh, people like to you know take that as a baseline or as a guideline. And uh, why do we need this standard? The reason is that. You know, the same product is developed by you know, many companies, many you know, companies all over the world. If you see about, uh, think about USA, USB port. So uh, you may have noticed that it doesn't matter from which company uh, made computer or laptop or whatever device you are purchasing. If it is a USB port, it is the same for all. Now, why it is the same? Because this port is standardized by some body like NIST. And everybody, you know, following that configuration, what is given there. So it is becomes, it becomes uniform. As it becomes in uniform, for customers, it becomes easier to, you know, use multiple devices, right? So, <clears throat> uh, so this is the thing. Now, what is confidentiality here? So confidentiality, in the prospect of information security is restrict access by unauthorized individual. That means we have our own data. In case of an enterprise, they have their own data, business data. So nobody who is, who is not authorized to access those data will not be able to access them. Right. Then comes integrity. So what is this integrity? Integrity is data has not been altered in unauthorized manner. Like say you are sending a mail okay, from one when you know, one user is sending a mail to another user. So when this mail is transmitting over the channel, nobody in the channel have captured it and done some you know, modification into it. So if we can restrict this or we can guarantee this, then we can say that this transmission channel is having integrity. Okay, so this is one thing. Another thing is that you will notice that when you send this mail to anybody, that receiver is not going to check this mail immediately. So it may be that receiver is going to check this mail after one day, two day, or uh, after some duration of time. So during that time, after sending, where this mail is going to stay? This mail is going to stay on the server, right? It is going to be on the server. Now, when it is uh, you know, in the storage of the server, uh, there should be a guarantee that no one, whoever is uh, having access to the server, is not going to change the content of this mail, right? The so same goes with uh, the anything, uh, any, any database, any banking transaction, or any kind of transaction online going on. So <clears throat> these things are uh, the same thing goes on with every transaction, right? 
so that is what is called integrating and third one is availability you know most of the time you will find uh, as a user users are basically very concerned about, about availability but when it comes to investment for availability uh, who will do the investment definitely the organizations and whoever is the owner of the data in that time you will find that people are becoming you know little you can say kind of uh, they don't want to spend much on availability first let's see what is availability means here so information can be accessed and modified by authorized individuals in an appropriate time frame that means say you have a facebook account right on your facebook account you have posted something in the morning but after one hour you feel that i want to modify my post or i want to delete my post okay now after one hour if the facebook is uh, going to be you know you know down for your reason or due to some reason you are not able to access uh, facebook anymore that becomes unavailable to you so it can be you know due to many reason it can be for network connection it can be uh, you know for some bug in your system it can be for some failure on the you know particular server right? <laughs> so anything can hamper this availability but thing is that if you find this kind of problem you are not going to you know use these services very frequently right <laughs> like why you know gmail is very popular why most of the people uh, like to have a gmail account because they have the highest amount of availability you can say right <clears throat> so like this any service on any online service you like to use as a user we find to have 24 by 7 availability okay now comes come again in the detail of confidentiality the first thing is that we need to know basis for data access that means when we uh, say that uh, this data will be accessible by this user and it should not be accessible by some user so how we'll decide this confidentiality you know? so in the same organization there is the say it is a business organization some enterprise there is some business data so this if it is a you know future plan of some business it is not going to be accessible for every employee of the you know, enterprise so it be it remains uh, you know confidential for others but it uh, remains you know, accessible by the management people and you know directors and all okay so so on on what basis this will be decided that becomes the first question okay now how do we know who needs what data so okay so in in an organization when you are working so this need to be answered that uh, who needs what what data like for example i can say if you see in a bank right if you see in a bank uh, there is you know some people who are sitting on the counter who does single transaction at a time that means who serve single customer at a time so they don't need to access to all the data at a time or if you see another thing with them that is so it is a you know what what bank you are uh, visiting uh, in that bank uh, you know, there is two uh, counters okay one is for you know saving account holders okay saving account holders another counter is for loan account holders okay <clears throat> now if uh, this there is a person recruited for serving this purpose this person does not need to see what of the you know loan are being given by this bank because he is only handling the saving account so he will have you know access to saving account uh, details but he for him the loan account details or uh, loan details of the bank will be confidential okay so he is not authorized to see all the loan details and the same goes with you know vice versa goes with the you know, employee who is serving the loan accounts 
okay so this these things are need to be decided basically okay so approach is we can use some access control mechanism or uh, no, who specifies who can access what okay so when we are speaking about confidentiality if you have listened to me you have listened that i have you know uh, taken this word access control many times so access control is a you know, very important part to ensure confidentiality okay now how do we know a user is a is the person that she claims to be like you know uh, somebody is trying to log into a system okay now how the uh, system will understand that uh, who is trying to log in he is the right person like you know if you see in a banking system okay say there is a login pane okay and say i'm trying to log in to my own account okay and i'm giving my username and also giving my some password right the question is that how the bank this is the you know user interface that is the login page now this login page is going to communicate with a bank server the question is that how this bank server how this bank server is going to recognize or understand that who is trying to log in through this login page is a legitimate user or what he is saying that uh, he is uh, uh, this person how it will recognize right so <clears throat> need you know her identity and need to verify this identity so for doing this it needs identity so it can be one thing that a username can be my identity to the server okay as the server server assume that this username and password are confidential uh, information for me and i am not uh, supposed to share with anybody so based on that assumption you know this server can uh, recognize me okay this is that that person only because this is the confidential information which is with this user and it is not supposed to be anybody else in the world okay so approach is identification and authentication so this you know we call it what password authentication right and uh, using uh, this is used for identification of the user that is the username okay next is analogously need to access or use basis for physical access so this is another important thing basically we who you know, practice only the software engineering part we you know usually forgets or you know don't take interest about it but it is also another important aspect that where the servers are physically located and who are having access to that physical location okay that is another uh, important thing right because basically somebody can go to the, the server and you know take the data out or <clears throat> make any kind of uh, you know deletion of the data or any change on the server right so <laughs> access to a computer room or use of a desktop even if you see in the labs you will find uh, you know usually the people uh, maintain a lab record uh, log basically lab log visitors log right who is coming in the lab uh, you know they take their identity basically their name and detail okay. so it is important from this uh, confidentiality perspective as well okay now confidentiality is difficult to ensure but easiest to access in term of success okay easiest to access in term of success so binary in nature either confidentiality is there or it is not there it is like this okay now comes to integrity integrity is concerned with unauthorized modification of assets or we call resources resources means it can be some uh, sorry it can be some hardware or data data is also a resource and uh, what we had just spoken in the previous slide is confidentiality it concerned with access to 
the aspect okay so this um, you know for a yes, you know information technology company or uh, enterprise the data is the biggest aspect or most uh, you know uh, you can say costly asset or okay now integrity versus confidentiality integrity is more difficult to measure than confidentiality right because if you know, some data is stored on you know, some server or at the time of transmission if uh, it is really changed by somebody or not uh, you know so very little change has been done it is uh, quite hard or um, difficult to identify okay but if you have uh, studied about uh, you know database uh, management system or uh, computer networks there you will find uh, you know different kind of integrity from their perspective definitely but uh, the concept are same okay so the mechanisms also you may have seen in those papers you know how to assure integrity then not binary but degree of integrity matters so integrity is not always a binary that integrity is there or not there it is not like that it is something like degree of integrity that means we say that okay this is there is high degree of integrity low degree of integrity like this okay and it is also context dependent means different thing in different context okay so this uh, integrity is uh, mainly context dependent okay then could mean any subset of this asset or properties like you know uh, precision accuracy currency persistency meaningfulness and usefulness now type of integrity for an example is quote from a politician okay now preserve the code preserve the code is called data integrity but this attribute the code is called origin integrity do you understand what does it mean say abraham lincoln said something okay you write it in double quote some quote was given by abraham lincoln so as long as you are writing this quote exactly what is given in this co uh, double code so it called it called data integrity that means you have not changed the data right so it is called data integrity right but so somebody has misquoted it that you know under after this you write like this abraham lincoln but uh, if somebody have uh, instead of writing abraham lincoln say uh, written uh, some other's name some other politician's name okay so somebody have uh, written here barack obama so this kind of you uh, know uh, mistakes are uh, you know miss uh, you can say wrong use of uh, you know origin is called violation of origin integrity So that means who had originated this quote? The who who was, and uh, uh, this quote was told by whom, right? So if you are writing the correct origin, then it is uh, it will be said that origin integrity is maintained. But if it is misquoted, okay, somebody else's name is added there, then it will be said that origin integrity is violated. So you can understand that uh, with a single quote. And uh, you know its origin. We have two kind of integrity here. So we have data integrity. We have origin integrity. Now you know it depends. You know when we will find uh, say in the history um, class that many students may have misquoted it you know by mistake or by something. But uh, you know most of the student will write it properly. With that time we can say that okay data integrity is there, but origin integrity is not uh, there. It is violated. Okay, so this is the reason is that you know, integrity is measured by degree of uh, integrity. Okay. Next is availability. So whether the service or you know net resource or whatever uh, we are uh, you know 
accessing online are available around the clock or not. Okay, that means 24 hours a week. Okay, or we can, better to say, sorry, uh, 24 hours into 365 throughout the year, it is available. Now, you may think that, you may say that, but uh, nobody write uh, 24 into 6, uh, 365. Why people write 24 into 7 always? There is a reason that because there is no guarantee that all the years will be up 365 days. So we don't say that uh, throughout the year, uh, you know, uh, 24 into 365. But uh, this is fixed. Every every week is up seven days. So if we say 24 into seven, then it is more correct. You know, nobody can say that uh, we are uh, making any mistake in this. Okay. In the same way, we, call, we don't say 24 into 30 because all the month, uh, all the months are not having some number of days, right? So this is the thing. So full implementation of availability in security is the next challenge. Okay, it is very hard, but still, you know, we always uh, find that people are trying to, you know. Uh, uh, serve uh, 24 by 7, uh, you know, from the availability uh, around the clock. Okay, now full implementation of availability for internet users with ensuring security, security, right? So it is uh, quite hard. Now complex, uh, why it is complex? It is context dependent, right? Like, say, Gmail or Facebook and whatever service, they are keeping their server 24 by 7 up. But what about if your local service provider is not able to give you an you know, internet connection 24 by 7? Then also availability will be hampered. Right. So it is definitely context dependent. So where you are, uh, you know, where you're staying, your connection, your facility, and all these things uh, depends. Okay. Now, cloud mean any subset of this asset, like data or service okay like properties are like you know usefulness sufficient capacity progressing at proper play pace and completed in the acceptable period of time okay now we can say that an asset or resource is available if timely request uh, response is given or available. Fair allocation of resources are there. That means no starvation. That means nobody is continuously waiting to get the service uh, you know, available. Then there should be some you know, level of fault tolerance, but uh, there should, you know, due to some little fault, the system should not be go into breakdown uh, situation. So this is called what? Fault tolerance. Mm -hmm. How I had a, in previous class also, I was telling you a little bit about this of how fault tolerance can be assured. You can have better, you know, exception handling and all these things, better secure development of your software codes. So all these things, uh, you know, contributes to fault tolerance. So easy to use in the Intended way that means uh, you know uh, in what way uh, that means uh, keeping what in the mind the service is designed it should be you know easy to achieve that uh, you know um, goals okay then provide controlled concurrency so there should be some you know level of concurrency and uh, that should be. Uh, Definitely controlled concurrency, like you know, for that we need concurrency control, deadlock control, and all these things. I know that you have uh, knowledge of all these things, uh, deadlock control and concurrency control, when you have studied operating system and uh, database management system, you have uh, seen about them, right? Now, <clears throat> you see, look at this uh, CI principle, again, I'm going back to this. Uh, what, uh, what, uh, you know, is in our hand after this discussion. You can see we have spoken about confidentiality first. That means 
who else can access my data when this question confidentiality comes in our uh, in, in our mind our mind thinks about who else can access my data like when you you know upload your other card detail uh, to some you know banking website or some mutual fund website or anywhere okay or uh, some of your personal information always you think that okay i am giving my information but who are the people that are there on the other side who can see my information right then integrity what is this is my data alterable without my knowledge that is another question comes in our mind right so like you know when we you know do some transaction online or when we deposit some money to our uh, you know bank and the bank maintains all the data online on their server. So it uh, question comes in our mind. But what about I'm keeping 50,000 and if somebody have removed one zero from there, then overnight, you know, immediately my um, fund will become uh, 5,000 only. So what about that? So these things always comes in general people's mind. But this is assured by integrity, right? Then availability is my data accessible or need? Like you know, with this uh, most of the time in your mind it comes when you use some online banking or you know digital payment systems. You know, you will know, find that people keeps some, some cash in pocket even if they have the digital payment system in the on their mobile phone. Why? Because. Uh, we are concerned about, about availability. It may happen that we have purchased some important uh, goods, uh, it may be some medicine, and that time your uh, online service of digital payment is not available. Okay, due to some network delay or the server down of the you know, service provider or whatever it can happen. So that time, you know, we used to use our cash, right? So this is what you know the question comes in our mind when it comes to the question of availability. Now, how to need or we need to balance this uh, among this you know confidentiality, integrity, and availability because they are having some trade-off. If we increase the confidentiality at the highest level, it will decrease the availability. How you can see here. So you can see first point is confidentiality versus integrity and availability. So what can be the highest level of confidentiality? I want my information extremely confidential. So your answer will be disconnect the computer from the internet to increase confidentiality, right? You just disconnect your internet connection from your computer. So nobody else will be able to access your computer you know from the network so your computer will be with you only and your data will remain extremely confidential but if you do that then what will happen availability will be suffer because if there is you know, some other user who are accessing your uh, computer remotely due to some work they will not be able to access your computer anymore right and these things will be also, you know, online things will be also unavailable to you, right? Then integrity suffers due to lost update. Now, if you just disconnect it, you know, from the network, now the same data, if say that that, that is distributed uh, data, so that the data is uh, say updated by some legitimate user, that will not be updated on your system as it is disconnected from the network, right? <clears throat> so integrity will also suffer. Now example two, integrity versus confidentiality and availability. Now what will happen if we want to have the highest level of integrity? Have expensive data checks by you know, different people system to increase the integrity. Okay, then confidentiality suffers as more people see the data. You understand how look at this how we can you know increase the integrity we can do one thing let's say it is a banking system and bank statement so for an you know, assuring the integrity 
say there is a committee and they said that okay we will hire uh, five audit firm parallelly okay so all audit firms audit one audit two up to audit five so if all the audit firms assures us that okay there was uh, no uh, you know malicious transaction that me or you can say there was uh, no fraud in the transaction okay mm, then we will say they, okay uh, integrity is maintained in the transaction of, or you can say in the patch books or, or with the data stored in the server okay now what the, is the problem with this if you hire high audit firm to check integrity that means you have to disclose your data to these audit firms then only they can analyze so instead of one if you hire five so five different firms are able to see your data so you have disclosed your data to five different audit firms so you your target was increasing integrity but as your data is you know disclosed to different uh, audit firm so it became it lose its confidentiality up to some level why because you don't know out of this five there may be some you know dishonest audit firm who can disclose the data outside and as there are five it will be hard to uh, you know, find out which firm you know taken your data and disclosed outside okay so uh, you know always it is uh, not uh, possible you know manage uh, trade up maintain the trade up between uh, you know integrity and available uh, sorry confidentiality then availability how it suffers availability availability suffers due to locks on data under verification okay so when your data is under verification so auditor is auditing your data and at the same time if you keep your data uh, you can say you know keep updating your data then these auditors will be mad they will not be able to audit it okay so what happens you have to lock your data for some times you have to pause the updation of data for some time right so during that time you know the availability for the user will be suffer now, now how we will understand this happens if you say you know the online sbi most of the time after you know night 11 or in that between you know uh, 11 pm to 1 am in between this time if you you know access online sbi many times you will find that they will ask you you come back after two hours maintenance is going on what maintenance is going on uh, you know uh, at that time actually they check that whether up to that time up to that time there was some fraud there was some you know um, uh, transactions which are you know uh, happened uh, you can say um, by mistake or something is uh, mismatching so all these things are being checked this time and uh, usually during that time it is good to um, not allow the user to update uh, the databases okay okay but few other things come when you say cia right we are, we are speaking about cia but it is not only cia you will find it we need ciaan now what are these extra things see we have spoken about confidentiality oil and good integrity oil and good and availability now we need to think about two other thing that is accountability and authentication but you know why this uh, in, in nist document this uh, cia don't mention about uh, this thing ab accountability and authentication basically uh, some people think that uh, accountability is kind of uh, part of integrity in that part of integrity and authenticity 
is also kind of uh, you know responsibility of integrity and confidentiality right so that that is the reason uh, many people like to think them as separate uh, you know entity so other security components added to cia can be authentication how we are going to authenticate the you know user then authorization non repudiation or accountability okay so what is non repudiation uh, again you know this thing i had already told you it is indirectly related to uh, this integrity <coughs> say you are you send some money online to your friend okay mr a send some fund to his friend b okay using say some online uh, payment system say using some google pay now this b is supposed to acknowledge a that i have received this money right now if this b is denied no you have signed it is okay you have uh, your transaction number and all but uh, <coughs> i have not received it okay <coughs> but in real say b is really received it okay so in that case it will be said that b is uh, you know deny the reality this is called what uh, uh, repudiation but if we have a real mechanism that b i will not ask b why should i ask b instead of asking b this fund is definitely deposited to b's account right b is have some account it is supposed to be deposited there and this account basically belongs to some bank now he decided okay i will not ask b anymore because he is uh, you know denying the fact i will ask the bank directly whether this account is uh, you know credited with my fund or not now, this bank will responds to that and bank will you know so bank is the trusted again because bank does not have any interest on the, you know whether b is uh, you credited or not credited and uh, with the fact that b is denying so why should bank uh, will you know support b so bank is responding to a no this app, amount is added to b's account yes okay so uh, that is uh, you can say the alternative or how to prevent uh, this uh, non repetition okay mm, it can happen on the receiver end and it can happen sometimes on the sender end also when it can be uh, it can happen in sender end say a have not sent the money to b but a is claiming no i have sent this money to you but uh, you uh, it uh, you know i don't know why you are not uh, you, know, uh, you know why you are not realizing it so in that case you can say a is just uh, denying the fact or say a have sent some message to b okay and letter a is saying that no this message is not sent by me it can be sent by anybody else with my name but in reality say we know that uh, no a, a is the person who sent the message to b okay so in that case it will be called that it is the the source who is denying the fact right so again we need some mechanism to you know assure that the source cannot uh, do the such kind of uh, repudiation okay so this is what called non repudiation that means uh, no party can deny the fact of a transaction okay now authenticity i have already shown in the previous slide what is this verifying that the users are who they are they say they are and each input arriving at the system came from the trusted source right so it can happen you know another thing another uh, you know thing it is speaking about here that means say we you and me or say mr a and b 
they are they are doing some communication okay on some uh, message room or so using some messenger app okay a send message one b send the reply and this is going on now after some time some mr c came into the picture okay who is a malicious person and he is just uh, this c is just pretending that uh, he is a actually he is not a right and he just pretending that he is a he started sending messages to b and it may be the, the message of the, the reply what b is sending to a is also read by c okay so this is what we need to verify that whether the input is arriving it is arriving from a trusted source okay so that assurance is also needed right and another is the users are who they say they are understand and this is also i have explained already non repetition okay being able to trace the responsible party process entity in case of a security incident or action okay now here are the security services it is defined in this uh, document x dot uh, a double o what are the services they are speaking about first one is authentication then access control data confidentiality data integrity and non repetition okay so again let's uh, look at a little now uh, at the authentication so it is the assurance that the communication or communicating entity is the one it is claimed to be we already know about this other authentication now peer entity authentication like you know mutual confidence in the identities of the parties involved in the connection so and you know, many of the people you know, many of you know that blockchain is very popular nowadays and do you know why blockchain is popular the same thing what blockchain can do the same thing we are still doing you know this online banking system medical insurance everything we are doing nowadays right without blockchain but why blockchain is becoming popular and people are trying to implement blockchain in everything reason or the biggest reason is that blockchain gives better authentication okay it is quite hard in blockchain to you know Uh, make the system you know uh, full or you know uh, to uh, you know uh, you can say hide your identity uh, reclaiming you are someone else it is not possible okay <coughs> now data origin authentication is another another thing so that is also in a blockchain handles in very good way okay so assurance about the source of the received data now next is access control the prevention of unauthorized use to of a resource right so who does is not authorized for resource he should not be able to use a res, that resource okay who can have access to a resource that is uh, need to be decided into this then under what condition access can occur and uh, like you know i was giving this bank uh, counter you know bank counter example now if you see that in the counter there is no customer but uh, this counter you know, this employee who is sitting there is accessing uh, different uh, customers uh, accounts and uh, checking the balance and uh, this that they are doing that means there is no reason for him to access uh, the, the account detail of different users or account holders what he is doing okay so under what condition they should do that should be defined then what those uh, you know accessing is uh, resource are allowed to do that means what they are doing are they allowed to do that then data confidentiality protection of data from unauthorized disclosure against eavesdropping okay then traffic flow confidentiality is another thing that is you know one step ahead that means say 
I am sending some message to some uh, other person. Okay. Now, if uh, somebody just want to know to whom I am communicating, okay, then he can just trace my packet on the network. What are the different router it is passing through? So that he can, uh, you know, the attacker can track my packet, what I have sent. Uh, throughout the network and it can see the final destination of it. So they can uh, do the traffic flow, you know, uh, if they can see the traffic flow of my packet, then they can, uh, you know, uh, find out. So that is what called uh, traffic flow confidentiality. That means my packet, is packets must be, you know, anonymous. The attacker should not be able to identify that whose packet this is, right? Then data integrity assurance that data you know, received are exactly as sent by an authorized sender so that is the first thing that is the original uh, origin integrity and no modification insertion deletion or reply happen okay then non repudiation what is this protection against denial by one of the parties in the communication. How to protect the denial, right? As I was telling you, the two parties communicating, uh, okay? They're sending different messages each to each other. Now, there should be some mechanism that uh, the senders must be responsible for they are accountable for what they are sending and the uh, receiver should be accountable for you know, sending an acknowledgement and uh, we can say just uh, confess that okay I have received your message okay then on origin non repudiation and destination non repudiation I have already told you okay next is the relation among uh, among this integrity data origin authentication and non repudiation if you see here integrity is at the core. When we say authentication, it is not only integrity, it is some part of integrity or, you know, the integrity is assured by authentication definitely, but authentication can assure uh, some other things also. Okay, then comes non-repudiation. The non-repudiation, again, uh, it is not only integrity, it, uh, you know, covers authentication and some other issues also. Okay, so this is the rough idea of uh, you know integrity, authentication, and non-repudiation. Okay, so I'm stopping this discussion here because the uh, next topic is going to be different, and uh, you know we don't have enough time to continue the, today. So, um, okay, uh, I will share this uh, these videos uh, and after downloading and. Uh, uh, editing that means I will remove some you know extra part at the beginning and the end. Okay, and I will uh, upload.